Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hermitcraft server. <laughs> Had a little scare when I logged on here. Thought I'd show you guys. I think some building has been done since I last logged off. And I am now underground. Let's see. I think we are at the Mobilisa, if I'm not mistaken. It's looking like it. Oh. Somehow I ran out of blocks. Yeah, okay, well, there we are. Uh-huh, yeah, so guys, I know a lot of you have been wondering, where is the Hermitcraft series? What happened to it? Well, it's right over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It's one of those things. I didn't really plan it. It just kind of happened. Uh, ended up taking a pretty, pretty substantial break from the Hermitcraft uh, server here from the series. Um, I've done a little bit on the server since then, but I haven't really put in any videos. Um, but I, I've been wanting to come back here for a while, and yeah, I figured now's a good time to do it, especially since uh, I, I'm kind of working on this project here very slightly, but they've been waiting for me to finish up these capture points. This is the Mobilisa, if you guys aren't aware. It's a big project being worked on by Iskel and Rendog, and I think they might have had help from a couple other people as well, including myself. Um, but they're doing the bulk of the work, uh, from what I know. Uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to give you a quick little introduction to this game, because uh, I haven't shown it in any... Well, I haven't shown it in any videos myself. <laughs> so excited, I can hardly speak. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just tell you kind of how it works here. It's it's called the Mobilisa because it's uh, like a MOBA game in Minecraft, M-O-B-A. Uh, which is like League of Legends or Dota, Smite, whatever you kids are playing these days. Um, so it's trying to recreate that. There's two sides. You got the life or nature side over here, and then the death or evil side on over there, uh, divided by this middle barrier thing. And uh, kind of like in League of Legends, how there's creeps and stuff, there's actually zombies. There's two zombie spawners on this side of the map. And it's going to constantly spew them out onto the map and they'll chase down the players. You kill the zombies, you get zombie flesh, and that is like your currency in the game, the money. So you you collect that or pull, pull it together and then there's a shop where you can actually buy stuff and hopefully give your team an advantage. And then you can maybe overtake the enemy team and win the game that way. So this is the shop over here. Uh, each side has their own shop. You basically th throw the zombie flesh into the hoppers here, and then it unlocks that or buys the item. Uh, you can unlock armor sets. You can, you can buy a weakness potions, 12 zombie flesh for that, uh, or a golden apple for 20. So it's a, a pretty cool little system. That's also the spawn point. Uh, and then the where I come in with this game... Uh, my my reason for being part of it, I actually did the capture point systems for it. So there's three of these capture points on the map, and the goal or the way you win is by uh, owning all three of them, I believe. So you might recognize these. <laughs> I've reused some old uh, technology here, but I've made it better now. It actually works a lot better. Uh, yeah, so this capture point in the middle of the map here is uh, basically done. Uh, it's it's the other two though that I still have to finish copying over, but they're they're pretty close to done as well. I'll give you a demonstration of how this works though, so you can see uh, there's the blue clay, the red clay for each of the teams. Uh, when the light gets to five, Azuma's was all excited to see me. <laughs> I know Azuma, it's been a while. I'm sorry, I'm back. Um, uh, yeah, what was I saying? <laughs> Once you get five lights, then you own the capture point. And check this out. I got the beacon working in the middle. Like last time I made these capture points, um, you could not change the color of beacons. It was one of the features I was just dreaming of. And it's in the game now, which is really cool. So once the team gets all five lights, that's when they own the point. And then this turns blue. Uh, there's also an ability here for fireworks to get launched. So maybe a blue firework would get launched. That would serve as a visual indicator uh, when it gets captured. Um, and then as soon as red team steps on it, they steal it. The blinking lights are done by the blue and red glass down there. There's a note block that clicks every 
every so often when the clock runs. And the cool thing about this capture point, the really tough thing about it is uh, you can see there's three pressure plates per side. Um, so if two people are on, here I'll try to stand on this side. Like it captures pretty slow if it's just one person, but if you have two or three, it actually captures it three times faster with three and two times faster with two. Um, if for some reason somebody was to go on the other side, uh, it also balances out. So one one person on red side cancels out one for blue side. You can see it just went down there. So if I put that there, uh, it's not going to change at all because blue side is canceling out red side right now. And if I get off of this, it should change back to the fourth light pretty quickly because it just went down. So yeah, it all balances out, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to, to get this all working, but uh, you can see <laughs> it is definitely one of the more elaborate redstone uh, designs I've done. And then it goes over here. Oh yeah, and another cool thing that I've added with this one compared to like the old one on the Minecraft server is I have a reset for it too. So that was something I didn't think about when I designed it last time. It's like, uh-oh, I got no way to reset this thing. <laughs> uh, this time though, just press this button. And it counts down to the middle here. So if it's on red or blue, it'll go all the way down to zero. This gets set back to white at the start of the game that way. Uh, but the way Eskel wants it, he wants it so, like, let's say this is a blue side over here. He wants the blue, um, or he wants this capture point to be taken by blue at the start of the game and the other side uh, owned by red and then this one's neutral. Um, so I got to make slight variations with the capture points, but overall... It should be pretty easy, uh, but I'm gonna get uh, get ahead with uh, finishing these. They're pretty close, but I have been putting it off. <laughs> Today's the day; it's happening. All right, guys. So this is a few hours later now. Um, it's funny, even though like I'm copying the redstone over from from this capture point to the other two. I know exactly what I need to do. I have it all like here that I can check. Uh, it still takes a long time though. And you gotta be careful when you copy redstone that you don't make any mistakes. Because usually that just makes you waste even more time. So it's better to go slow and make sure you do it right the first time. Uh, now that I've copied like everything over though, I notice our main one here is a little bit broken. <laughs> so I copied the, the mistake from this one to the other two. Um, so this is supposed to turn solid blue when blue owns the capture point, when that fifth light is on. If they're capturing it, it's supposed to flash blue, which is good. And likewise, it's supposed to flash red if red's capturing. But then it's supposed to turn solid red when they get this fifth light. And I just noticed, like while well, making sure everything was good and, and perfect here, it doesn't do that. It actually stays white for some reason. So let's go check out what's wrong here. So this this tells when the fifth light is on. It goes down here. It's supposed to go to the red glass down below here. Aha! <laughs> it's this one one block short. You know, it's always little things like that. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that's not too hard to fix. Oh wait, no, that didn't work. Why would that work? You got to do it like this. Okay. So the cool thing about redstone, it can only travel six. Or 15 blocks. Uh, trick you can do though is just put a block um, and get an extra 16th block that way if that ever happens. Cool, so we got that fixed up. Uh, now it's time for problemo number two. <laughs> uh, I noticed, like, this seems fine. There's an issue with the copies here. I did make a mistake somewhere. I'm not sure. This is going to be a little bit more tricky to fix, I think. If we throw, yeah, it should never do that. So that light and that light was on at the same time. And I'm noticing that piston over there is going wild. Do you see that? Oh, not right now. I guess it's only when we capture the other way, maybe? Yeah, so it's not, it's not moving right now. 
I think when we start going from blue to red, though. Yeah, you see how it's doing that? Aha! Let's go see what's wrong over here. Uh, I bet you it's getting butted, and we don't want that. Mm, it is possibly from this wire over here. Yeah, because this wire is supposed to go into the block when it goes up, but we don't want it actually activating the piston. Oh. <laughs> this is the joy of redstone, guys. Like, unbelievable how many times I've fallen down, and then it's like, well, you got ender pearl. Got ender pearl. Always carry ender pearls with you. It's crazy. And I'm just about out of food. His scale doesn't feed his workers. I'll have you know. That guy, somebody's got to report him. Uh, I looked every single chest around here. All I can find is zombie flesh for food. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go get some more, I think. Uh, what was I, What did I want to do? Yeah, so we're going to replace the stone brick here with slabs. This is a cool trick as well. If you, if you replace um, solid blocks with slabs, then it doesn't uh, cause the butt effect that a lot of people have, have troubles dealing with. So now this won't... This wire here won't power the piston below, but it'll still send a signal to the block when it goes up, I think. And that should fix it. Right? Let's try it out one more time. Okay, so it was from blue to red. And especially when there's two players on. Seems good now. Yeah, I think we're good now. Cool. Awesome. So I think we're done with the capture points now, guys. I did some more testing. And I just added the resets. I haven't tried them yet. This will be our final thing. Um, so at the start of the game, this beacon's supposed to be solid blue. This one's supposed to be solid red. And the one in the middle here is supposed to be uh, a white neutral. And we, we've tested this already. We know it works. Uh, but we're going to try out these ones. Uh, and the way this works is we basically send a pulse to this block. That activates the hopper clock. has uh, 23 items. Okay. And then... Um, the more items we add, the longer it runs for, but it basically uh, powers a comparator clock, which sends many pulses into these droppers, um, shoots any items in them into the, into the ones over here. So that sets the score down to zero again. But since we're doing the reset different on these other capture points, I had to uh, change it just a little bit. The really cool thing is they're actually side by side. Like they, they're on total opposite ends of the map, really. But because of the barrier in the middle, um, they're very close to each other. And because of that, we can uh, share some of the wiring. Um, so over here is where I put the reset right in the middle. Um, just kind of put it downstairs here for Iskel or Rendog whenever they hook it up. And we're going to have to do double the items. So that was 23. Uh, let's add a couple extra in too, just, just for good measure. Oh, it's running. That does not sound good. <laughs> Uh-oh. Or else it's really fast. I'm not sure. What's it doing? No, I think that's... Or maybe it needs more items. Man, that was, uh, that was going crazy, that piston, wasn't it? So that only set it to three lights. Uh, this was red. Yeah, it's supposed to get it all the way up to blue. Oh, this one didn't work at all. No, this one this one worked. Why didn't the other one work? They're built exactly the same. Huh. Oh, because this piston didn't have that problem. Was that a bud bud situation happening, maybe? Hmm. Oh, it was. <laughs> Wait a second. Did we... Or do we have two wires like that? I thought I fixed that already. Oh yeah, that's the other wire. That's the one I fixed. I guess I gotta fix this one too. Make it so it can't bud like that. Alright. So now it should be good. I'm gonna try it once more. New problem. This redstone repeater there is sending a signal through to here. And getting the signal stuck on. So let's get this changed as well. Move that up one block. That should be fine now. Let's try it again here. So this one needs to change to blue. This one needs to change to red. And we need to double the items uh, for the reset because this has to go all the way from there to zero and then from zero to, to, 
to 5 on the blue. Uh, the neutral one, the way we're setting it, we're making this go to 0 and this go to 0 at the exact same time. But we can't really... Well, we could do it, but it's just easier to do it this way. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I did the reset slightly different at, at each each capture point here. So let's go ahead and uh, press the button here. I left a little sign for Iskel in case he gets confused. This is where he needs to activate the reset if you're watching Iskel. So press the button. And don't hear any pistons this time. That's a good sign. I tell you what, though, one thing I'm noticing, especially at these capture points, I didn't have this problem at the neutral one. Or oh, are they going to change it at the same time? This one went first, then this one. But either way, it's fine. Um, I'm getting a lot of lag around these uh, these capture points. I, I'm hoping it's because the redstone isn't covered up. <laughs> and it'll get better once they, they finish the look of the, the thing here. But that one didn't give me any trouble. Like, I can stand on the pressure plates and my game doesn't really get affected but those ones man I'm like my my camera's going like when I'm playing so yeah it's probably smooth in the recording though thankfully all right so I'm gonna call this done I think we got the capture points done so let's let's maybe head back over to the dang land and check things out over there Wait a second, one last little nitpicking thing here. <laughs> Attention to details, guys. I noticed, uh, like, they have blue clay here, right? I think that's indicating this is the blue side, which is why I put the blue on the left here, so it's farther away from the enemy team, because the enemy team, the red team, is going to be coming in this direction, right? So you want this closer to them, I think, and then um, you don't want them to have to run to the other half of the capture point, even though it doesn't really make much difference, but it just feels better, right? Um, but the one in the middle here, it's reversed. Like, or is it? Wait, 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 maybe not. Oh, no, it's not. Duh. <laughs> I thought it was, because blue team's going to be coming out here, and they're going to reach blue side first. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Red team's going to come from this way, they'll hit red side first. Yeah, it's all good. Aha! Here we are, guys! Back again! Home at last! <laughs> it's been a long time since I was last here. Uh, but I don't think it's changed too much since I since I was last here. Oh yeah, guys! Vintage Beef is on the server now, in case you didn't know. That's, that's really cool. Really happy about that. Oh, I might need your help for a cool door in my base, if you don't mind. Ah, yeah, sure. That, that sounds good. Might go check that out. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see. What has changed? Doc did this door over here. The Doc door. Uh, it's like his own personal secret area. He doesn't want me in, apparently. I don't know what he's got going on back there, and I don't want to know. Uh, and then over here, he has made a, another mini game. Uh, I saw the video of this. It was like some kind of TNT game. And I'm noticing <laughs> it looks like the uh, part of it blew up over there. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional. I'm guessing not. But Doc does have the the skin where like half the face is blown up. So maybe maybe it was intentional. You never know. Looks like he's crying though. Oh no! Right into the pit of pit of doom. Oh, that's that's not cool. Uh, how does this work? So he's got a bunch of TNT launchers over here. Oh, I. Oh no! I shouldn't have landed on that. Oh yeah, that's right, I saw this. So he, he was like dropping the TNT here, and another guy goes into the pit down there, and you gotta try to kill him, I think. That actually works pretty good. So there's no like... Oh, that, that might be our horse, actually. I should be careful. <laughs> um, there's no like start or stop to it, so he's, he's kind of go. That's cool. Pretty fancy. And I noticed over there, I think Azuma was making a game too. I have no idea what this was about. Let's go check this out real quick. Is it like a maze? Oh, it's a boat game. What do you do in this one, I wonder? I think it's just like a race? Looking like a race, right? If I was to guess. There's a button down there. Oh man, I love pressing buttons. <laughs> Should I do it? Looks like we got a boat dispenser there, maybe? Oh, it's a clay. 
Oh, now I've done something. It It's going for longer than I expected. Clay and a boat. Interesting. Uh-huh. Well, I might have to ask him about that or go watch one of his older videos to find out for sure. But yeah, I, I guess uh, now that I'm back here, we'll talk about uh, maybe future plans for the series. So I would like to continue doing the mini games and stuff here, but maybe... Maybe in the future I will start like an actual base on the server would be cool for a little bit more variety. Build like farms and that kind of stuff. Uh, kind of like a fresh start in vanilla. Oh, but also, of course, we have the... <laughs> I have a very hard time flying on the server, by the way, because uh, of latency. It, it really affects it and I'm not used to it. I notice it helps if you aim a little bit higher than usual. But yeah, we also want to finish up the Fat Princess team. Let's go take a look at that real quick. Make sure everything is just the way we left it there. Uh, we had it about two-thirds done, I would say, but we got to do a bunch of redstone on it yet. But uh, And build, do a little bit more building, too, I think. But uh, yeah, this this is another project I would like to get done. Don't want to leave like another arena that I don't finish. Because I didn't feel about good about that last time I did that. And uh, would get would be cool to to play it. I know a lot of the other hermit crafters have been asking about it too, so it'd be fun to play it in the future. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about it. I think I'm gonna wrap up the episode here for today. And uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> uh, have a good day. Take care. Bye bye. Arr, I must be blind. I just noticed somebody put gr ugly granites in my castle <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> uh.